and many of us will have often marvelled at historical artefacts on display in museums here in Australia or overseas. But how many times have you actually stopped to actually think about how they got there? Well, following the hugely successful podcast, Walkley winning journalist and broadcaster Mark Fennell has travelled the world for a new six-part series looking at stuff the British stole. In the days of the British Empire, objects were taken. The British made a bit of a habit of finding things that they liked. It's not theirs. They didn't own it. Why is this artifact here and not in China? Like, explain. They usually ended up with polite plaques. People have raised questions about this for a long time. Is this looting? Looting's in the eye of the beholder. But the real story? Official records call it a gift. That's an absolute load of horse shit. I've worked out what she actually said there. And Mark Fennell joins us now from Sydney. Mark, good morning. It wasn't that hard to work out, but <laughs> I appreciate the hard. bleeping nonetheless because my kids are probably watching uh, Yeah, this. lots of kids are watching. Good morning, kids. Hey, listen, congratulations. Firstly, on, on the wildly successful podcast of the same name. So what, what prompted you to uh, take it down the TV path? Uh, I just really wanted to make sure that I never get a knighthood uh, by getting the show as big as possible. No, look, I think as soon as the podcast came out, it was kind of a bit of a surprise hit. I thought I was making this weird show about ephemeral logics that sit in museums. It turns out people really wanted to, to see what the objects looked like. And so uh, the ABC kind of came to me and said, would you be interested in doing a TV series? And I said, look, yes, but I want to do different objects. And so every episode of the TV series is a completely different object. So if you've listened to the podcast, there are the different objects. And, and it does take you all around the world. You know, we go from, uh, obviously we start with the crown jewels in, in the UK and then we go through the Middle East. There's objects taken from China and also objects that ended up back here in Australia because it isn't just a story of the British Isles. It's the story of the empire. And when yeah. you think about it at its peak, the British Empire was a quarter of the world's population, a quarter of the world's land. And so it's a much bigger story than just stuff that ends up in the UK. Yeah, I, let's start with uh, the crown jewels and episode number one features, amongst other artefacts, the Kunor Diamond, which is expected to feature, I guess, in the coronation of King Charles next year. What's, what's the story with that? So the Kohinoor diamond is, has a, probably one of the messiest histories of anything in the Crown Jewels because uh, its last owner was a 10-year-old boy. And uh, technically he surrendered it. He was the Maharaja of the Punjab and he surrendered it while surrounded by an army. And it ends up uh, in the UK and actually Queen Victoria didn't really like it that much when it first arrived. And then the, in the, what they ended up doing is they ended up cutting it down to size so it was prettier. But the fascinating thing is it's not just about the diamond, it's also about the boy because the boy, the last Maharaja, Raja of the Punjab Kingdom, he ends up in the court of Victoria as well. So we end up tracking not just the story of the diamond, this highly contested diamond, but also the boy. And the really complicated thing with the series is it's always messier than you think because technically India would like it back, Pakistan would like it back, the Taliban in Afghanistan have asked for it back because the history of the diamond extends so much further and I think that's a big part of what we do with the show. It's never as clear cut as people think it is. It's very rare to have clear victims and villains. Often it's through the telling of those little twists and turns you realise that history is a lot more complicated than I think we give it credit for. Yeah, that's a very good point. And, and we, we can, uh, regardless of who claims ownership, concede that diamonds like that one what was stolen. Uh, the, the big question is, do the English, do the British, does the royal family concede, acknowledge this dark stain in England's history? It's a, it's a good question. Uh, it depends who you ask and about which object you're asking about, right? So if you go to the Tower of London, there is a plaque that doesn't give you a lot of this history. On their website, I will say that they give a bit more history. But I think, you know, the, the series was kind of a reaction to the inadequacy of museum and gallery plaques. You know, they've got these 80 words to tell you the story of, of objects. And in, in most cases, the, the history of these objects is a lot less polite than what they put in plaques. And really, I'm not necessarily, and you will never get me to venture an opinion about whether objects should be given back yeah. or not. That is not for me to, to have an opinion on. But what I am interested in is, let's just be honest. Let's just be honest about where things came from and the power dynamics and the grey areas involved in that. Because through those power dynamics, you actually realise how the British Empire operated and, and how it is we've ended up with the world we have today. Has it changed your views on, on colonisation, uh, studying this deeper? Yes, it has. Um, I think what I've found is that um, it's never as simple as people like to think it is. And I think, you know, 
I wouldn't exist without the British Empire. I'm half Indian, half Irish. I was raised in Australia. Like, I just wouldn't exist without it. And I think, you know, sometimes people say to me, you know, well, why are you picking on the British? It's like, well, I'm not picking on the British for starters. Um, but, you know, Mongol stole thing, the Roman Empire stole thing, but the difference is that Genghis Khan's not on our coins and we don't start Parliament with Hail Caesar. The legacy and the influence of the British Empire has infiltrated and influenced so much of Australian life. And it's so ubiquitous that it almost seems invisible, right? It's only when you start pulling on the threads of objects like these that you can kind of follow and illuminate this history. And, you know, I think Australia right now with the death of the Queen and the ascension of King Charles is probably at that moment where it's like, oh, we are part of this, this monarchy, but what is our relationship to that? How should we feel about that? And I guess it's part of a lot larger conversation about, well, where do we sit within that and how do we want to sit within that in the future? Questions we might be formally asked, uh, perhaps in the next term of Parliament, uh, but that's a subject for another day. Hey, Mark, listen, having been lucky enough to catch the first couple of episodes, can I say I, I love uh, your reporting, I love your narration, the scripting is great, but the cinematography is beautiful. It is stunning. Thank you. It was a big part of, you know, when we made the podcast, we wanted to have like a, you know, a movie playing in your yeah. mind. And so when it came to making the TV series, um, I actually got to work with one of my, my favourite cinematographers, Dave May, who, who did the first episode. And uh, he's Australian and we took him all around the world and, and a team of other cinematographers. It was really important that, you know, there was a movie that played in your mind when we made the podcast and I wanted to make sure that the, the TV series lived up to that. So thank you so much for, for saying that because it was a lot of effort and, and we do work quite hard to kind of make it feel as big yeah. as it can be because it's, it is a big story. It always is worth acknowledging the cinematographers, the cameramen and women, including Mark Cleary, who did a great job with series, uh, episode one. Mark, thank you. Thank you so much. And you can catch Stuff the British Stole tonight at 8pm on ABC TV or anytime on ABC iView. Check it out. Highly recommended. Mm, it looks fantastic.